Good morning. We left Deer River, Minnesota. First thing this morning, and we are headed south down towards Brainerd, Minnesota. We've got a load under the tarp on my flatbed behind me and I'm gonna deliver. Once the trailer's empty, I'm headed down to Evansville, Wisconsin. St. Paul. Clearly, I got here just in time for everybody else to be on the road. Continue on this road for 21 kilometers. I'm trying. It's rush hour or something else here. There must be some construction or something ahead here on 694. It's been like this for a little while already. But I have a load that's ready, so I got all the information on the load. I think I'm picking up trailer 538. All I gotta do is I gotta get down there. It's already ready for me to go and grab it. I'll hook onto it, tie it down, and then get as far back towards home as I can. too much in there. Anything you can possibly imagine to give yourself diabetes is in Quick Trip. I mean, it's a dangerous place for a guy like me, someone who likes sweet stuff. They got pastries, they got sugars, they got donuts. That's a pastry, I guess. Oh, it's beautiful. And my air conditioning started working again. I don't know what's going on. The AC seems to be working just fine. So I made an appointment to get this truck fixed, get the AC looked at on Saturday. 
We'll see how it does. It's working pretty good. I don't know what's going on. It's pretty icy cold in here. I actually had to turn it down. So I guess we'll wait and see. If it's still good through the whole day tomorrow, I'm going to cancel that appointment. And you know how it's going to work. As soon as I call in to cancel that appointment, it's going to stop working again. So that'll be fun. It's the next morning. I picked this load up late last night. It was all dark already. I just wanted to get it picked up quickly and get far enough down the road that I can make it home today, the next day. And I did that. I used up every minute of my logs except for three minutes of drive time. So I had three minutes left when I got here. And uh, this is my load that I picked up. Pretty straightforward. Nicely put together. Now we're gonna continue north. So I'm in a rest area uh, north of Madison, Wisconsin on I-94. We've got a long way to go and we, we're gonna be running towards the end of our day. It'll be like a, a 10 hour drive to get to the border and then another hour and a half to get back to the yard yet. And then we gotta leave this trailer there. And I gotta go home yet, so I'll be home late tonight. I won't, uh, I won't make it home before everyone goes to bed tonight. So that's, that's too bad, but I'll be home first thing in the morning. This is exit 116 I-94 in Wisconsin, USA. We are headed westbound towards home. I find home in Southeast Manitoba, Canada. So we're about, uh, 11 hour, 10 hours, 10, 11 hours from home. We just started our day. So we got a long day ahead of us. Finally got through Minneapolis, St. Paul. Wow, I lost over an hour going through that city. Traffic was nuts. So many people, hey, nice boat. I've been, I've been noticing people's boats more. Everywhere I go, everybody's got a boat. I don't got a boat. I think I'd like a boat too. We don't use our camper very often. I wonder if we should sell it and buy a boat. You know, if we're gonna have something, shouldn't we have something that we're actually gonna use? Maybe trade it in for a boat? This idea is floating through my head. I think we'd use a boat more than a camper at this point in our lives. When Theo gets older, we want to get a fifth wheel camper anyways when we go do, when we start doing family camping more and, you know, when we're down to one dog and uh, kids are a bit older. So we're, we're going to trade it in anyways. I mean, until then, maybe we'd make more use of a boat than a camper. I mean, I think we'd like to get a pontoon. It's very family friendly, sort of like a living room boat you can fish off of it. You get one with 150 plus power motor, you can pull tubes and stuff with it. Or you can just sit out on the water, relax, stretch out, bring lunch along, sit under the canopy, just enjoy the water. I think we'd use that a lot more than a camper. To be honest. I gotta talk to the wife about this. I, I mean, I see if I can convince her to maybe consider it. see what our options are anyways, right? If we're gonna have something, we're not using the camper. Our friends use it more than we do. But I'm pretty sure we use a boat like pretty much almost every time I'm home in the summertime. Like that's what I'd like to do this weekend, like, go on the water. We're busy this weekend, but I mean, if I had a boat and I wasn't busy, you know where you could find me. It's a good way to make friendships stronger too you know call up one of my buddies say hey what you doing tomorrow you want to go fishing i got a boat build strong lasting friendships that way i had a couple of friends that i think would jump at the chance or take the family out i mean if it's a pontoon we can take the whole family out bond as a family i mean there's endless opportunities there's endless options but you got a boat there goes another boat you see it up on the bridge Boats, boats, boats. You got a boat? That's not a boat. What's this? That's not a boat. Nope. Why are you passing me on the right anyway? 
that lane ends. That's why I'm in this lane, if you're wondering. About a mile up, that lane is gonna end. Grand Forks, North Dakota. In 400 meters, turn left on South 48th Street. I have to take a half hour break, unfortunately, because I can't make it to the Canadian border on my eight hours. In the US, every eight hours, I have to stop for 30 minutes. In Canada, there's nothing like that. You stop when you need to stop when you want to stop. Here, I can't work more than eight hours before then I have to take a half hour break, then I can do the rest of my 11. So I'll clean off the windshield while I'm here, I guess. Wait for my half hour to run out. I'll pull into one of these spots up ahead here once I get my windshield cleared. And then we'll wait. The government says I need to wait. Can't go home yet. Yeah, don't argue with the government. At least I'm not gonna argue with the US government. I'm a guest here. I have no right to argue with what they say their rules are here. I'm a guest, so when I'm here, I follow their rules. Anybody that can say anything against it, it's the citizens here. They can always write letters to their representatives and say, hey, this half hour rule, I mean, it's kind of silly. And see what they say. It's probably not going to change anything, but whatever. I will just obey the law and do what I'm told. I'm happy for the privilege being able to visit. I do love coming down here to visit. It's a great country. If you guys haven't visited the U.S. before, you really should. Don't believe everything you hear on the international news. There's not bullets flying all over the place. I've never felt unsafe. In most areas of the, just like any country, you go to some big cities, there's probably some neighborhoods you probably shouldn't go to. But uh, out here, like where I operate in the Midwest, this is like home to me. Being North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, even down there, all this like Iowa. All these are these this feels like home to me i'm a guest here but the people here are so kind and so nice so generous that they make you feel at home they welcome me in they treat me just like they would treat anybody else they always make me feel at home and i always feel safe it's a big country though i guess it depends where you go there's some places like if i go to new york city or you know los angeles or you know other big big cities like that it does feel a little foreign to me but <laughs> that's because i'm not a city person i'm canadian i go to toronto and i feel like a foreigner in toronto i go to quebec i definitely feel like a foreigner in quebec because that's all french i don't speak french i go to the mountains i'm a prairie boy i go to the mountains of british columbia i feel like a foreigner so it's a, it's a big landscape but i always love coming down here to visit our american neighbors they're really good people Let's go home. Oh, I didn't clean the windshield. Oh, bah. Oh, bah. It's gonna get the bull snot treatment. Come on. Come on, we're gonna do this right here with just the wipers, watch. 
Apple's not visible, glass cleaner. Watch this. this, this isn't the rocket spray, this is the regular stuff. Uh. driver's side with the bull snot but I have the oh where, where did I put that lid now oh, there it is I have the rocket spray underneath the sleeper there combine that with a little bit of this oh yeah These bugs don't stand a chance what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Push that bull snot over to that side as well, like that. There you go. Let that soak over there for a second while I do this side. You will never see a window so clean after this. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Passenger side, but get it done real good too. Because you guys don't have to look out the passenger side. As long as you guys have a clear view, that's what's important. Okay, there you go. Versus ruin it. Nope. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. That was just a quick job. Now let's get out of here. I want to go home. I'm gonna be home so late already again. It's always home late. humid outside. It's 25 degrees Celsius, it's about 75 Fahrenheit, and just humid. The air is just thick. Just thick. Just thick. Got just enough hours. Well, it's about another hour or so up to the border, I think. And then once I get into onto Canadian soil, I'll get an extra two hours added on because I change on to Canadian hours of service. tanks while I was here. That way next week next week when we head to Kenora then down to Brainerd I don't have to worry about fueling up I can just go. Which will give me the maximum amount of time at home with my family before leaving. I'm not going to get home tonight anyway so I figure I may as well get it done tonight. That doesn't cost me any extra time with them. Bossy. Let me do the driving, Karen. <laughs> yeah, ding dong to you too. There we go. Into the darkness. 
the camera I'm wearing on my head right now does really bad at night, so I guess that's it for this clip. I will see you probably at the end of my day. Maybe a little bit before then, we'll see. It's been a pretty long day already. We've been driving over eight hours. Oh, we've been driving about nine hours, yeah. So I combined Thursday and Friday into this one vlog which means I don't have a vlog for tomorrow. Maybe we'll do a live stream or something. I can't promise anything right now, but stay tuned to my social media, Facebook and X, and also here on YouTube. I'll announce it there if we're gonna do a live stream. Uh, other than that, I went home for the weekend. We had some good family time. Uh, the next vlog will be coming on Monday. So stay tuned, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tagging along with me. If you want to see more of my videos, if you can't wait till Monday to watch more, click on my username, go to my channel, and go to the playlists. There's over 3,000 videos organized into what year they were filmed in, or you can watch the one big playlist right from the beginning of when I did these vlogs, when I started keeping track of them anyway, all the way till today. There's a lot to catch up on, so you shouldn't have a lack of Trucker Josh for this weekend. Thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Be safe out there. Drive safe. Keep your head up. Use your turn signals. And don't speed. We'll see you on Monday. Maybe even before that. <laughs>